known for its ethnic diversity. Mauritius has also seen the introduction of new spiritual and religious groups which created a new perspective to practices of spirituality and religiosity. During my quest, I came across a few spiritual groups and people which have been created over the years. This documentary will address the various practices and beliefs of the different groups which have humbly answered my questions. Om Shanti. My name is Vicky Sweta, Brahma Kumari Sweta. I joined this institution of Brahma Kumari's World Spiritual University at the age of 18. Now already 27 years, I'm following the teaching of the Brahma Kumaris. And uh, the main aim of Brahma Kumari is to be peaceful and create peace around. So this group, how it was created, Brahma Baba, the founding father, but at that time his name was Dada de Kranj. Mm -hmm. He started by Om Dhwani, practicing Om Dhwani. And when he was doing that, there were many attractions towards spirituality because here people came to know about the reality of their true self. Om, the self, the, the driving force in this body, and it was like an, a spiritual awakening in them. So, you know, when one feels that it's so good, it's so peaceful, then family start following their neighborhood, and all started like that. And gradually it, uh, it spread to India. They came to India and from there to other countries of the world. What I learned here, it's one is a container and what inside the container. I mean the body and inside the body, the soul. So whatever the reality, that reality brought faith in me that I am not this physical body which I see every day and deal with everything using this body, but I'm the soul inside. Hare Krishna. My name is uh, Sundar Chaitanya Goswami and uh, I'm from Scon. I'm a sannyasi. Sannyasi means one who is, who, has, who is dedicating his life for the propagation of the philosophy of Krishna consciousness and one who has renounced everything. It's a fourth stage of spiritual life. There is Brahmachari, Gurhastha, and I am a sannyasi, sannyasi. So I belong to Iskhan and I'm a preacher. Okay, this is called Iskhan. It's called the International. Iskhan means International Society for Krishna Consciousness. That's the meaning of Iskhan. And uh, the founder Acharya is A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, who went to America. In, the, in 19, 1965, and this movement was created in 1966 in America because his, his guru told him to go to the West to spread his message. So following the instruction of his guru, so he went to America and he started the movement there. So we actually preachers we preach, so he would preach the message of the Bhagavad Gita and of the Vedas, of the Puranas, of the Ramayana, of the Mahabharat. So we preach this message because especially the message of the Bhagavad Gita. In Bhagavad Gita there are 700 verses and Krishna is the main speaker of the Bhagavad Gita. So Bhagavad means the, this, the absolute. Gita means the, the absolute knowledge, the absolute truth. In this world, we speak of knowledge that changes, you know. But Bhagavata speaks of absolute knowledge, knowledge that does not change. It is eternal. It's called Sanatana Dharma. 
Sanatan means eternal. Dharma means religion, eternal dharma. So Krishna speaks, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that to always think of him, to remember him, to worship him, to become his devotee, and we are servant of God. And the Gita speaks about we are not this body. This body is temporary. Body is made of earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, false ego, and that will die. That will be finished. But the soul is eternal. So we are the soul. And the soul is not Mauritian, is not Indian, is not Chinese, is not, it doesn't have any material designation. The designation of the soul is that he is the servant of the Supreme God. What do you see as a challenge with the mainstream religions? Just to say that all started with a very pure motive to bring to bring back peace in life, to live life happily and uh, like to stay safe, stay protected from all uh, negativities and all. But today, you know, I think all are experiencing a stage of degradation gradually because the teaching is here, but the one practicing, I would say, that uh, uh, there is some power lacking in human being to apply what is there in the teachings. So that is why, why there is that lacking, because the intellect that need to understand experience is not that much. We are mo much more in verbal, like um, I, I read and I explain, but I don't experience it myself. But there is an effort. The effort is here to apply, but uh, the power within we need by Supreme Being in order to truly have a turning point from that stage of degradation to uh, start uplifting us, uplifting humanity. But all start by self-realization. Self-realization will bring that true uh, transformation that I want within me and I think all religion are do or trying I won't say uh, fully but at least they are following that path and try to be a better person so, you know um, as there is a branch at the start it's very powerful and when it grows there are small branches and that becomes weak Mm -hmm. So all started with a religious father, uh, for example, Buddha. He was very powerful. He created a, the religion of uh, Buddhism, was established after, his, after he, the, he left body. But the followers are not the same. And we accept that there is not the same power. But no one is to be blamed for that. Because the power to absorb spirituality is not the same. The goal of religion is to teach how to serve God, how to love God. See, philosophy without religion. No, religion without philosophy is sentimentalism, fanaticism. Religion without philosophy is fanatics. And philosophy without religion is mental speculation. So we have to have both. Religion also and philosophy. Both absolutely. Yes, in the past people they were more religious, more pious, more religious. Nowadays with the also with the upcoming and the the, um, the technology development, material development, people tend to become a little bit more a side track, you know. But there is also a difference between to be to be religious and to be spiritual. Somebody asked me a question: Why does religious people fight? Right? Why do religious people fight? If you see, the main fight in the world is because of religion. But I would say, yes, religious people may fight, but spiritualists don't. 
as a difference between really being religious and spiritualist our society is a spiritual movement it is not based on religion it is a spiritual movement so if we follow of course there are differences you know in in uh, performing and accepting there are, there are, there are different, many differences of course in uh, belief you see but we understand the philosophy are there everything is clear in the scriptures is this how we have to know we have to read them and we have to have the guidance of a guru to understand that the philosophy are there and there are lots of understanding there lots of main understanding about the religion what which is which who is who but if you read if you search if you have guru then we will understand then there will be no conflict as from my knowledge the scriptures are from several scriptures not only the vedas quran mahabharat the ramayan where there has been the illustration of many other gods in different avatars then why do you believe that krishna is the only supreme god yes very good question according to the scripture there are uh 30 313 million devas devi devtas like ganesh shiva lakshmi all they all devi devtas but krishna is a supreme person again krishna explained in gita ishvara is his form of brahma samhita brahma ji saying ishvara parama krishna sachitananda vigra ishvara is ishvara ishvara parama param ishvara param ishvara means the supreme the many ishwaras many controllers but there is one supreme control ishwara parama krishna this is from brahma samhita ishwara parama krishna sachit ananda vigraha he is the form of anadi adi govinda he is the cause of all causes sarva karana karana he is the cause of all causes that is krishna so most of the scriptures delineates that krishna is a supreme personality of god and that others they are avatar understand the meaning of avatar 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 means the 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 expansion of krishna for example ram is also god you know the many many avatar avatar means a descent it descend in different form krishna comes in different form different roopas you know we like have many many roop it takes he comes according to the situation he comes in different but he's the same person like ram is also krishna but he comes in, in as an incarnation in the form of ram vishnu also is coming from krishna but these are avatar the descent like for example we you have yourself ari priya but you can't expand yourself you can't become two but god can do it you come in different form so they all same person but still the devas the demigods they are not supreme they are servant of god So I have read that Brahma Kumari promotes celibacy. Can you explain what is it about? Yes. So um when we learn about uh, soul as a pure being so here a pure being child of supreme father his light is always there a pure soul. Pure soul means where you are truly god loving but if you are uh, like extrovert in going into the other life and experiencing all truly speaking you won't be able to devote yourself to remember god and apply the teachings of every day so deeply so we don't force anyone this i i say that if they like it if that touch their core inside to follow they are free but those that does it mean the one who is not living a celibate life we he's rejected no he's not rejected but uh, like uh, it's all about teachings so one day will come they will when they will know the importance of celibacy and how this help us connect to the supreme being and uh, you know why why it is much more 
like emphasis is uh, put on to purity because impurity is not our nature anger is not my nature greed ego all these are acquired things but if i truly want to be in that reality i have to go in my innate being so my innate being is unconditional love there is a big difference between love and lust but we take the uh, the other life where there is only pleasure and lust like an artificial life it keeps you away from the reality of who you are truly from where we have come and where we have to go like my purpose and destination won't go into that higher consciousness it will stay here and i will be like uh, in that artificial way of living but no one to be blamed as the awakening happens with time and with that uh, with that eagerness that you want to follow that the skin gives great importance to every being on earth from insects to human beings what happens if a saint human takes the form of an ant in his next life to perform his karma and not kill it does it mean that i am a sinner for killing it or if i did it will it mean that i'm not allowing karma to do its purpose um yeah because this is the creation of God. No one is allowed to destroy creation. No one is allowed to kill the animal. Not even an insect. Right? So we are vegetarian. We don't kill an animal because, you know, for example, if you can see if you kill somebody, some animal also, like the, you know, smaller baby animal, the mother is very, very, very painful for the mom because they're also family. So by destroying, by killing animals, so we are also destroying nature. Mm. And we're not allowed to, to kill any animals. That's why we are vegetarian. And it's by being vegetarian, you see, by killing the animal, what are we eating? We are eating this, there is a trauma. When, when animal is being killed, there is a trauma. Animal is become very fearful, very afraid. And some kind of crime is also involved in killing animal. So that's what you're eating if you're eating the animal. You see? So by eating a vegetarian and also we develop goodness, mode of goodness. We become very peaceful, very cool. And also it helps it helps also to develop the spiritual consciousness. Uh, you see? That's why we are vegetarian. So we're not allowed to kill the the, the animal. So uh Jiva Jiva Jivanam for every living entity become the food for the other living entity. Like for example, the ants, you're talking about the ants. Some of the animal will eat. For them there is no karma. That living entity will go naturally from, from body to body. There are 8,400,000 species of life. This is a transmigration. So after he becomes, for example, after he dies, become ants and he become a chicken or a dog or a horse. This is natural. He will go traverse all this. Eight million four hundred thousand. Mrs. Savitri Ugara, the Vice President of the Art of Living, since 1997, has had the pleasure to introduce me to the purpose of Art of Living. Art of Living was founded by Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. It's an indescribable feeling, including stress elimination programs. During COVID time, where stress, anxiety and uncertainty are causing much strain on everyday life, the techniques offered during the programs are of immense help. The programs conducted by Art of Living are not only a concept but also apply to our daily life. The happiness program for adults include the teaching of breathing techniques, pranayam, bhastrika and sudarshan kriya which means 
having a better vision of oneself individual on this planet his teachings are universal which go beyond the barrier of race nationality and religion with an underlying theme of one world family art of and honesty are the values of spirituality the younger generation wants to understand the why of rituals and practices thus the teachings of shri shri ravi shankar include the knowledge of vedas upanishad and bhagavad gita which is explained in simple language understood by all we are living in an outside world the journey should be inward where one can experience inner peace but why did beliefs and practices changed during the past decades what could have possibly happened which pushed people to choose different paths or have they lost their way maybe they found a path this evolution is vast religion changed along with human behavior an extent which also lead to some misconceptions and mal practices so hi my name is roshan prasta and i'm a reiki master a spiritual healer so we do several types of healing Reiki is just one of them. I'm also an Atlantean healer mm -hmm. and an Ascension master. I've been a healer since 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, I think the healing energy has been channeling in me since I was 20. Reiki and Ascension are two very different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although Reiki helps people to ascend to a certain level of consciousness, mm -hmm. but Ascension is a completely different aspect of you know. Uh, different path okay. different path yeah. so, so reiki is a path mm -hmm. to healing to higher levels of consciousness mm -hmm. but ascension is a completely different path also mm -hmm. so reiki is basically a healing energy mm -hmm. yeah we all have some amount of ki inside our body yeah reiki is universal energy mm -hmm. yeah those are the two words that make up the word reiki yeah now <laughs> reiki was discovered many many years ago it was used by many different masters mm -hmm. but uh, master usui found it reiki mm -hmm. and he turned the word usui reiki and that's the school in which i was taught mm -hmm. you know so usui reiki he received the energy and he gave us an ability to channel this energy so what happens is the chakras open up during an attunement process mm -hmm. chakras are opened up and this allows us to be able to channel the healing energy and share it with others mm -hmm. yeah. so it works on many different levels it works on the physical level it works on the mental emotional and spiritual levels mm -hmm. yeah. and so since it is energy it is a lot more powerful than people realize mm -hmm. yeah because the whole body is made up of energy is religion and spirituality the same thing Uh no okay so religion is basically dogmas mm -hmm. okay it's a belief system created by someone mm -hmm. okay spirituality is not a dogma mm -hmm. yeah as human beings our consciousness over the last 10000 years or so mm -hmm. was very limited in its view so there were few people like some gurus some maharishis and some you know like buddha and exactly. they attained enlightenment and they taught us some things but human beings with our limited mindset uh, we've been looking for a formula to get from point a to point b yeah so we've been looking for practices to get us from point a to point b and the point b was enlightenment mm -hmm. yeah so religion worked for some time to get us to a certain point but right now at this time it's not really um helping us get there because we evolved beyond religion spirituality has been there for a long long time uh, we've been um indulging as human beings we've been indulge, indulging in spiritual practices since at least i think 10000 years more than 10000 years 
in different different ways we just didn't know that uh, it was called spirituality um now when you think about it you know spirituality is uh, beyond religion it takes us beyond religions yeah in spirituality you will encounter or realize that all religions are one that all human beings are one that we are connected to everything around us mm-hmm. and this is how life should be yeah in oneness with everyone so that we can have a loving peaceful life with everyone around us so it is a much higher level of consciousness than religions so religions they have been used by people to divide people yeah whereas spirituality is reuniting us again yeah we're not looking at people of different religions as them and us yeah we're looking at everyone as the same religious prayers they do have they do help but again you're limited to that particular set of beliefs yeah so let's say i for my example from my own perspective i was raised um christian so in our belief system there's jesus and there's the archangels and there's mary and there's uh, other beings around them that work with them but i have limited access to all of those beings now from a spiritual perspective i can access much more because i can access uh buddha and um, i can access shiva and i can have access to vishnu because they are all one so that can bring in their healing energies and their healing abilities especially ganesh and hanuman and Durga, they all have a lot of different healing abilities. I can call in Huan Yin, who is a Chinese uh, uh, goddess. I can call in Thor. I can call in Poseidon because they have their healing energies and abilities. So I can bring them all in, and so I have a more diverse mix here. So the religious path of the healer, if the healer is focused on a particular religious path, that's only limiting his own or her own path. actually in spirituality um there's a lack of belief we are not limited by our beliefs so we let go of all of our beliefs because the beliefs are a limiting factor you don't want to believe in anything you don't just want to keep it unknown because in the unknown is the impossible yeah the possibilities are in the unknown because what you know is only limited My name is Avesh Desai. I'm a psychologist and also the founder and director of Forward Psychology Consulting. We offer psychological solutions to companies, individuals, NGOs, and a lot of a lot of other organizations. So basically, solutions for people at work and outside. Behavior is governed by a set of values, beliefs, what the person thinks and feels. Very often, we see religion as having a strong bearings on what the person feels and thinks. because religions come with a set of values and beliefs what you can do what you cannot do what you should do what you should not do so they will definitely have an effect at a certain point on what the person does if you add on top of that religion has some interests some rewards that they can offer certain people because it depends on religion certain will offer maybe different fruits different paths different levels and so on So based on the religion you may see more of a certain type of behavior compared to another same as for thoughts and feelings so it has a great degree of variability and while you might say they are all similar no religion is the same you might see religion as an institution a set of beliefs a group of you might say being very satirical you might say extremist it was designed to favor certain things over others so how to make people behave accordingly or what we might call the right way because what is right that changes from religion to religion this is where you might see the in group and out group effect in in group out group effect you might say those who are the in group they get certain favors compared to the out group they don't get the same favors so in a way people are coerced or influenced or encouraged 
whichever word you want to use because they each have a different um, connotation. There are certain gains to being in the in-group that you won't get in the out-group, which is how you might say those in the out-group might be encouraged to create their own form of gains and losses. So, like I was saying, it's kind of really extreme, but it can be made, it can be designed to make people behave in a certain way and not in another, in another. Be it good or bad, this is up to debate. So, people behavior will be influenced by which group they're in. Because sometimes you may say the elements of peer pressure, which also comes into play. Well, you might be scared to disagree. You might be scared to share what you know. You may not want to ask questions. So all these things come into play when you talk about Belize. It's an institution. It's huge. It's not the small, uh, you might say, sect or a group. But ironically, many of today's major religions started as sects back in the days in the starting points. People seek purpose. They seek a reason. They may find it in religion or outside. doesn't matter. Sometimes, if they have a doubt about something, they want to understand something. They have questions. And when people have questions, they don't know things. They're not comfortable. They don't feel secure. They have this feeling, this emptiness maybe, which can be filled by knowledge when they, their questions are answered. And this knowledge will influence their feelings. So whatever makes them feel good, they will get drawn towards that. So this is how you might say some people may choose one over the other. Others might be governed by fears. They're scared of uh, people, of situations, of anything actually. They may be tempted to go in a certain direction rather than another. Also, you might say, if the person has some inherent beliefs that they have, they had prior, or by whatever influence, by reading, by researching, by personal experience, and so on. So, they already have their beliefs and they see that a certain group has matching beliefs. So, they may be more likely to join them and just feel secure in a way you know normally people don't like empty spaces voids people don't like they don't like it because they may not understand emptiness based on cultures emptiness varies think of the far east think of japan china buddhist uh, governed countries normally for them emptiness is the biggest thing there is Ironically, nothing is everything. But in certain cultures, if we move further out west, the void may not be seen as important because it's immaterial. Typically, if we look at it from a need satisfaction point of view, religion satisfies certain needs of people. Usually people need to feel that they have a sense of purpose, that they are doing something, that they are useful. That they are being constructive towards whatever they are doing. So when they do sit down and pray and help people, engage in commu community activities and so on, they actually feel this connection, of course, it's been inverted commas, to maybe the sense of how they feel towards the God they are praying, towards the entity they are praying, towards whatever concept it is that they are praying. So. Instead of not doing something, they're doing something. They're just filling in a void once again. But also you might see that they feel reassured that they are doing things like others are. That's the in-group effect once again. If everyone's praying and they are not, they might feel different, they might feel maybe psychologically unwell. So if they do pray also, they will feel similar, which reassures in its own way. Because people, some people don't like to be different. It is more comfortable 
to blend in, to fit in. So this can influence the state of mind of the person also. Namaste. I'm Dr. Prakash Lachan. Uh, I did my study in Indian culture, mainly in astrology and Sasanatan Dharma. So in 1998, I started making research in astrology and uh, priesthood of uh, Sanatan Dharma. I joined the Sanatan Dharma Temple Federation in Mauritius, I think it was in 1997, 87. And I worked in several uh, uh, temples like uh, Khawaseb and everywhere. And I'm making research also in the Indian culture and uh, now we see how the development is going on in between the culture. You know, like uh, all, we all know the Sanatan Dharma is a root. Mm -hmm. As you know, the famous philosopher Maxwell, mm -hmm. who is from US, he already explained us that in, in his book, the oldest literature of the world is the Rig Veda. Mm -hmm. And as we know, the oldest uh, script is manuscript. Manu is, Manu is the first person, as we call in Sanatan Dharma. So, if you are coming for roads, there are many roads, that is, yes, that is true. Mm -hmm. But the main is a Sanatan Dharma. Mm -hmm. As we say, the Vedas say, Ekoham Dityo Nasti. That means the truth is one. Mm -hmm. But there are many branches. All the branches, some of their, them are there searching like peace, trying to help the society. But even there are more than like this, they are doing business. That is also true. Why we go to the temple? Temple is a place where we can sit at that time we can get peace mm -hmm. we can free from anxiety we can free from uh, like uh, troubling anyone that is a temple is a one of the places it's not a place where god is living mm -hmm. it's a place when we are going to search the peace inside of you mm -hmm. so it is better to look for temple why then did not find temple good way sometimes we have a problem with the society mm -hmm. like caste system uh, sometimes we see the priest was explaining the dharma, mm -hmm. he's out of subject. Mm -hmm. As they are talking not only for prayer or like uh, explaining the philosophy of Hindu, but they are just uh, giving example as now the people is doing like this, like that. So this is a reason the people not go for temple. Mm -hmm. But the temple is a place where you, where you can find yourself, uh, find yourself uh, like uh, peace, mm -hmm. free from anxiety. And uh, if the priest is good, and sometimes we see the members and the group of the temple also not good. Mm -hmm. They have like a caste system, rich, poor. That makes the people make a distance from the temple. Mm -hmm. So I think that, uh, that issue must be fixed. Now, what, what Veda say? Mm -hmm. Veda says the caste system is exist. Mm -hmm. This is real. But once we are in Mauritius or even in India, mm -hmm. they take this caste system like, a, I don't know, try to, to make people feel cheap. Mm -hmm. But this is not real. What Veda say? Veda says you have only four caste. Mm -hmm. But we, if you find in Mauritius, we are many caste. Mm -hmm. In India also, it is like same like this. What is a cost? Cost means your action. Like Veda explain us, on our body we are for, for cost. Mm -hmm. Like the head is Brahmana. Mm -hmm. Means who is going to teach someone and uh, doing like a priest, teaching, professor, all are Brahmana because intellect. Second, Veda say we have the arms. Our arms is here to defend, to fight, to protect ourselves. That means Kshatriya. Kshatriya means a king. Mm -hmm. If you are not, not a king, but you say, I am Kshatri, this is not real. Mm -hmm. If you are, you say you are Brahman, you are Brahman, but your action is not to teach someone, to explain someone, so you are not Brahman. Mm -hmm. And what is a Vaish? Vaish is, uh, is classified as our belly. I mean, we took every food and everything, and that distribute in our body to make it grow. So what is a Vaish? Vaish means who does a business. The last one is Shudra. Shudra means leg, mm -hmm. in our leg. Who serves this body, mm -hmm. who protects this body, who makes this body move. Shudra is a low part of our body. Mm -hmm. And the Shudra, if Shudra is no way, it's no Brahmana, no Chatri, no Vaish can move. Mm -hmm. So that, I think, the caste system is 
only just for mistake someone to make someone uh, blind. Mm-hmm. This is not a real fact what they say. Um, many believe that Hinduism was supposed to be spiritual. However, with time we've seen it change to a fanatic political association or group. What are your thoughts about this statement? You see, when, call, you, when we talk politics mm-hmm. and uh, religion, this is a very big issue. Mm-hmm. It's a very big topic, a very vast. Mm-hmm. When you see the Mahabharat, mm-hmm. we see the Ramayana, when the uh, Ramayan and Mahabharat, they have dharma and religious, mm-hmm. but they're separate. Mm-hmm. They're not doing the same thing. I mean, the first uh, sloka of Bhagavad Gita <coughs> said dharma kshetra kuru kshetra. Mm-hmm. Dharma kshetra means your dharma, your religious field, and kuru kshetra means was a battlefield. That means the politics is here. Yes, who can do politics? Which politician? Who already studies the Vedas and uh, like the Manusumriti? You know, the Manusumriti is the first book of all our laws in this. What a king how to do, everyone how to do. But now we see the politics, politician takes the religious as take for granted, and the religious and the religious leaders, mm-hmm. I have to say that also, because of the position, money, or any bribe. The promoting them, mm-hmm. but some of the politicians is like this. Mm-hmm. Some of the politicians, not all, or not all the leaders. What is the simplest way to be religious? Pure mind. Mm-hmm. Understand yourself and understand others. Simple way is devotion. You know, when you when we say ritual, it has a procedure. We have procedure. I say that priest is doing ritual. He has a procedure. How to give water? How to offer this one? This thing. This is, this is ritual. Devotion have no limit. Simple way, be a devotee. If you want to offer God anything, you can do it. We say Ravana is not very bad person, but he saw Shiva. He gets the blessing of Shiva. Even he is eating everything. That means that devotion is important. And devotion have no rules and no procedure. What you are doing is a devotee, is your devotion. There was one time someone told me that Ravana in the Mahabharata and the Ramayana is considered to be, you know, the demon. But in reality, he was loved by his nation. Yeah. And you see that they, they portray Ravana as a bad guy, but it was in Ayodhya that there were so many problems. You know, you know, you know what is a expensive book now we have in uh, in, in our. Hindu culture, Ravan Sanita, where Ravana have written all the precision Ayurved and, and, and about the astrology. Mm-hmm. What we know about the ten head of Ravan. Can you believe Ravana can have someone had ten head? No. Ten head. It's not that you have ten head. Mm-hmm. That means Ravana study four Vedas and Che Shastra. Mm-hmm. Means you have that ten kind of in, intelligence in his brain. So Ravana, he the lost when Ravana fight and uh, he going to die. Mm-hmm. Lakshman said, "Why you are so intelligent? Why you fight with mm-hmm. Ram?" He said, "If I will not fight with Ram, how I will win this battle?" Mm-hmm. Lakshman said, "You win the battle." Mm-hmm. No, he said, "Yes, because still I am alive and do not make Ram come into my city. Mm-hmm. But now I am dying from." Out of him, he can't stop me to go to Vaikuntha Dham mm-hmm. because the rules say when you die with God and you will go go to the moksha. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting moksha, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. So Ravana is not he is not a ga- bad guy. He's so intelligent, a big politician, big astrologer, magician, every every kind of knowledge he has. Mm-hmm. New spiritual groups as studies might refer them. New religious movements offer innovative religious responses to the conditions of modern world. They freely combine doctrines and practices from diverse sources within their belief system. They have arisen to address specific needs that many people cannot satisfy through more traditional religious practices or modern secularism. 
The difference between religion and spirituality has been a never-ending debate, where some view spirituality as beliefs and some sees spirituality beyond beliefs and practices. Religion has surely evolved compared to what it was long ago. The radical facet of religion discrimination against widows, child marriages, untouchables, sati system and it goes on and on. Religious wars, holy war in many countries has been present for years and years. Sri Sri Ravi Shankar said spirituality may prove as the answer to the infinite conflict in the name of religion. Where do we see religion in the future is a big question mark. Religion might become extinct seeing the rise in non-believers or people may turn to spirituality as a way to keep hope and faith alive.